Hey! Hey! That's been in the fuckers back for another exciting part of our Let's Play of Katawa Shujo. Live in Living Color. Yes. Hesman and Fat, of course, here. Yep. Being the glorious Let's Players. Yep, today it's just us two. Yep. Probably for the majority of this, just us two. Possibly. The, uh, the rest of the gang burnt themselves out on the uh, don't take it personally, babe, so they're being pussies. <laughs> what can I say? Mm-hmm. Well, I shall start here. Mm -hmm. I'll stick this over on this side for one second. Wow, unprofessional of us. We didn't even get situated before we started this. Nope. This is real life. I can't even see the mouse. Where is the mouse here? I don't know. Is it, it's missing. It's not even... What? Okay, let me see this here. It's right here. Wow. It you were just below the screen. It was not at all anywhere. Look, it's gone now. Oh, it's too. actually out of range. Looks like it's out of range. Ah. Okay, here we go. The mouse is out of range. Can you do it now? Yes, we're fine. All right. All right. It was seriously like three inches out of range. I wake fucking up. Wireless mice. I wake up in a strange room. Yes, and fuck wireless mice. So, at morning lit shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains closed that night. I. This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that, indeed, it's me who's supposed to be with the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating. Until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from the foil sheet. He thought about from himself for a minute. I suppose so. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one, a natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school, except for the fact that there is a hospital nearby and there's a 24-hour mm -hmm. nursing staff. Except for the people. Well, the people, too, I suppose. Yeah. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha, I think is the name, Misha. Yeah. Misha's constant laughter and she's Shizune's it. sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal. But I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah? <laughs> what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I don't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday. Didn't, rather. So many. Maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. Venetian blinds are a great transition. Mm -hmm. Especially for games like this. Mm -hmm. All through class, the question remains on my mind. So I decide to ask Shizu Shizune about it when we split into our groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Amen. Shizune, dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. How effective. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the tip is perfectly <laughs> is perfect and evenly flat. Fuck yeah. Yep. Ah ha ha ha! Sorry, sorry. Sichan. Shichan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, He Chan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is horrifying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Worrying. Wor yeah, worrying, sorry. What? Well, I don't know how I got it. <laughs> I'm just drunk, is all. Fuck him. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. 
Dot dot dot. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because uh, do so because there are, isn't really anything else to do. Well, that is one reason to join a club if there's yeah, literally nothing else to do. to do. It. There are also school events. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. Right on, that's helpful. So, Squiggly, you actually transferred in a busy time. In, transferred in at a busy time. Maybe Maybe you can help. Yes, you should read because I am drunk and dysgraphic. Well, there you go. The combination does not help. We're all disabled. I am. Sure. Sure. What's the festival about? Now my mouth is burning. That hot sauce is a bitch. Want some water? Ooh, no. Okay. Misha freezes. You ain't no bitch. Well, uh, 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 I don't know. Each end, the truth is, it's a local event, and I'm not from the area, so. I just fucking do some shit. And there is signing. He's done something desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts the glass at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. That's what it sounds like. Woof, 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 woof. Like a battle scene, but talking. Yeah, I wonder if it's like a Chinese Kung Fu Wire movie where it's like. Mm-hmm. Woof, woof, woof. Precisely. Huh? Uh oh. Who cares? Misa puffs out her chest and she saps, shouts. Shizune's words at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. She's loud because she's used to talking in fucking silence with this bitch. True. As well as pink hair usually means loud. Yeah. And, and well, well, not, I mean, not like necessarily. It. But Pinkie in my experience. Pie, Sakura. Sakura? Yeah, from Naruto. My two examples uh, are My Little Pony and Naruto. Two shows that I have not seen enough to know anything about. But anyway, the bitch from the last game we let's played. That's true. Uh, what was her name? Uh, nails. No, it, it's something with the. Uh, I don't even know. Um. God well, damn it! I'll take this opportunity <sighs> to shamelessly plug our other videos. Yeah. Everyone who wants to know about the pink-haired bitch from the last series of Let's Play should go check out Hessman and the Fucker's official YouTube channel and click on the playlist. It's ju- uh, The game, I believe, is called Let's Drunkenly Play. I'm sorry, babe, it's just not your story. Yeah, or don't take it personally, babe, That's it's right. just not your story. Don't take yeah. it personally, babe. <clears throat> it's hilarious. It's very good. The game is hilarious. We are, well, you know, Subpar. what you judge for yourself. We're at dicks, really. Yeah, which if you enjoy that kind of thing... Uh, then, you know, uh, fuck you. And you'll understand what we're saying. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind the festival will inevitably change with time. Ba-ba! Now, it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, battling his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally, noticing where we are, Misa stifles the yelping quickly, quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though, crushing it off without a care. She can't hear him anyway. Yeah, Shizune doesn't give a fuck, fuck, fuck. We are, well, maybe, shall, oh, whatever, fuck it. We are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Shichan. What? That's right, Shichan. Are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? <laughs> I think I saw a suspicious glance exchange between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Sejune look at each other again. Oh no, they're just gonna join the, some club with a bunch of hot bitches. It's gonna be Suzumiya Haruhino Yutsu all over again. I'm about to ask what? if they have an... Okay. <laughs> Suzumiya Haruhino Yutsu or the melancholy of Suzumi ha, uh, Suzumiya Haruhi or Haruhi Suzumiya rather. Um, because the Japanese names are backwards. Um, yes. It's about this guy that goes to a school and goes to a new class, and there's this fucking super outrageously, massively outgoing girl who starts a new club and just drags in a whole bunch of people around them, and then is, <coughs> actually turns out to be supernatural and can control the universe just with her desires. And oh. the people around her slowly become espers and 
cyborgs and time travelers and things like that, just because she... Anyway, it's really stupidly weird complex, um, and incredibly good. If you haven't seen Suzumiya Haruhi no Yutsu, I definitely advise you look it up on Anime DB. It's like the IMDB of anime. Ah. Our, intent, our viewers probably don't know that. I, anyway, yeah, I would probably guess not, but I should I, all, I should watch more anime. We all have our disabilities, like That's I said. Right. Mine's anime. Suzumiya Haruhi no Yutsu? What? Suzumiya Haruhi no Yutsu. Alright, well. That's S-U-Z-U-M-I-Y-A H-A-R-U-H-I-N-O Y-U-U-T-S-U. Just so you know. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long, dark hair getting up from her desk and slips silently towards the door. She has a facial scar. Bobby was a racist. Yeah, or really. a rapist or whatever. They were all in love with Diane. They were doing it in Texas. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. And we just have so many opportunities. Oh, I know. Okay, I have to say, I... I I have to take a small break here because I'm just thinking about what I was observing earlier in the 4chan thread. Yes? About this game. I saw, like, Goo Girls. I did, too. And, like, all kinds of shit. Yeah, I saw some really weird stuff. Uh, the thing that mostly stuck out in my mind was a girl with no arms. Yeah. I feel like she will probably come into play later on in the game. Very easily. But, uh, she seems to be the general... And that's really what they call it, is general. But yeah, it seems like... She is the one with the most, like, I guess, arguably maybe the face of Katawa Shujo. Okay. We'll have to see. We're still noobs here. Uh-huh. We've just jumped into the Toho universe and we have no idea what the fuck's going on. No, this is not Toho. Nope. What doesn't he say anything? Hey, Chen. Is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Probably. Or is Misa just looking at me after the girl who left? No. Mm, nothing. Not cool. No, no props. Ah! Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I'd go by the library and pick up some books. Not really. Do you want to have lunch together, then? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you chair perfect. The rest of the class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Hmm. Wow. A mysterious figure. This is. Don't take it personally, babe. Yeah. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. She soon looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just gonna be finished at all. It's not a contest or anything. Yes, it is, He-Chan. Impossible. Really? Really. I noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her dark eyes, which are not at all dark and are actually, actually kind of dark, actually. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and mine. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really. Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some getting used to. <coughs> it's not a contest, because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. Bragging rights. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. Well, apparently they are dark. Yeah, well, I mean, look, you look at them. They look like hair color. Yeah. It's truly an alluring gaze. An alluring gaze. Blah. Are you sure, He-Chan? Finish her. Blah. Ah, ah, you're wrong, he chan because I don't want to be the slowest one of the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. Yep. Ah! <laughs> Shizune pushes her glasses up the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. Quite. Oh, 
again, shit's over. <laughs> I don't need more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and packs up the bag, looking at me expectantly. Are we fucking going to lunch or what, bitch? I almost forgot that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Got too involved in the war. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? Ah, ah, that's so plain. Ah, right, let's go. Plain? I don't know, yeah, it's... At low old school, I like to eat outside, near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there is a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in classrooms or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had boxed lunches. Bento boxes, certainly. Yeah, really. After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. I bet they all contain sushi. I bet they do. And isn't rice. That, isn't that all Japanese people eat is sushi? And onigiri. Onigiri. It's like the rice bowl thing. Mm. So, Ichan! You wanted to know about the golden stuff, right, Rod? Right, g -chan. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Extending little nods of confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> nod, nod. And Misa straightens her posture as if she's about to deliver a speech. g -chan, do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Sigh, shoulders down. She's mm -hmm. still down there. She loves the readers. Yeah, she does. Hmm, there is the book club, right, Shi Chen? Right. But it's not like they have all the members they could possibly have right now. Sorry, Yu Chen, it's a really popular club. Of course it is. No, no, no. Blah! Ah, okay. More to the point, Yu Chen, does that mean you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Blah! Good, great. That's great, Yu Chen. Really great. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> What's so great? Oh, no reason. No reason. Well, he chan the other clubs in the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student Council. Swag. <laughs> student Council. Oh, yeah. I see. I didn't know this school had a student council, even though I'm looking at the fucking class representative right in fucking front of me. True. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it. And Misha is laughing. They must be shit on. Look at that, she has buzzing! Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion in the manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm? Right, right. Ichen, maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. <laughs> Why? Uh, well, for one, we can hang out every day. Yi Chen, uh, Chen and I are both in the student council. Actually, Shi Chen is the president. Being the class representative, of course. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha not, might exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. Mm-hmm. And if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Blah! Uh, of course, we're not trying to get you to join just because we could obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to... So you're admitting that... Ah, uh, no, we admit nothing. I mean, Nixon. I mean, Yi Chen. <laughs> of course it wouldn't be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. But even with all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one school. Yep, it's true, Yi Chen. Besides, you don't want to spend the time with us after school. Yi Chen, Yi Chen, Chen. Don't you want to spend time with us? Not, you don't want to. He does want to. Uh -huh. He wants to spend a lot of time in extracurricular activities with these two. Tricky dick. Yes. Nixon will never have anything proved against him. I can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. I wonder if there's hours of tape of sign language between these two. I hope so. I really hope so. Special <laughs> bonus DLC we can get. <laughs> every sign for the hardcore viewer who oh, knows yes. sign language. Both of them seem to be trying really hard to look their cutest, although they're already pretty cute to begin with. Well... Sign. So it's settled then. Welcome to student council. <laughs> God damn it, they what? want it. No! Ow! No. Aw, see, see, Chen? Of course it wouldn't go so easily. Blah. <laughs> Blah. All she can say. 
Yep, that's right, though it would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well, she chan owes me candy now! <laughs> you are betting on it? Hey, my wife is not a game here. <laughs> Shizune seems very intrigued by this. When Misha signed it to her, the aggressive glint returns to her eyes. Damn. Not a game, huh? Shizune is aggressive and... I don't, I, I don't know really the word for this here. Forward. Forward? Domineering, possibly. I would say domineering at this point, yeah. <laughs> Bleh. Ha ah, ah, ha ah, ha, that's interesting. Yi-chan, let's play a game. Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about a rich man, poor man, he chan if you lose, you have to join the student council. Jesus. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Oh, oh, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Bleh. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So, I will have to decline. Oh, bleh. He chan I'm very offended. Are you saying you don't trust us and that we would pull something so dis... Di disingenuous? Hmm. It makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends, and Misha's thoughts begin. Where? In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. Yep. No! no. I don't How see why not. How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? <laughs> paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle, and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. It's a dope game. Yep. We play it in America, indeed. We actually do. Yeah, every now and a good long time. It's kind of a passe old game. Not really a game meant for decision making. Not more, at all. More of just a troll hit the person in the face game. Yeah, it's more of just like, a, wow, it's fucking school when I have notebook paper and it's yep. fucking boring as exactly. shit. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition <laughs> between two people, he chan. It's absolutely not. It, no, not at all. Blah! And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, see chan? Ah, ah, that means the game that really separates the boys from the men. Mm-hmm. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. Ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ha, yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, he chan? Because you suggested it. Yep. Misha. Shizune frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me to join the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Blair. Okay, Hee-chan, how about Risk? The game of world domination. Dear lord. Oh man, this is for They're wanting to play Risk. <laughs> They're going hard. I don't know what that is. B -b 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 -b. Wow. B -b 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 -b. I can understand how what paper football is, but not knowing what Risk is. It's fucking, like, Milton Bradley, right? Come on. I don't know, some kids are poor and don't have Mint Risk. Dude, I was poor as shit and still had Whatever, anyway. Maybe some kids are too rich for Risk. Maybe. The I Xbox was also, I was also pretty rich for a minute, too. I suppose so. My family had some ups and downs. Had some downs, and then some ups. Well, more well, more like some ups and then some downs, and then yeah. some just downs further. And then further down. And then me. Uh -huh. This is just like the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Literally zero income. Except for YouTube. By the way, comment, rate, subscribe. Yeah! Right now, as motherfuckers is netted 32 total cents. Google told us to monetize our channel, so we, we did. did. By the way, everyone, if you're watching this and you experience ads, definitely download Adblock Plus. We still get the money. You still don't have to see shit. No, no, no. We don't get the money. <laughs> we don't? No. <laughs> if they have Adblock, we don't get the money. We start the video repeatedly to view only the ad. Yeah, I would say so. That's everyone all do did. that. Fiber control the world with armies and everything. It's totally a boys game. Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after school. Blech. Ah, oh, really, Shi chan We can play just for fun, He chan Shi chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Do it. Well, okay. Okay! Okay, okay, perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room, then, He chan Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. 
Duh. Oh, yes. Kind of. Not really. That's actually probably just a perspective piece. But still. <laughs> I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree. But only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. Oh, there she is Sneaking again. off again. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. They're hanging off of me now. Yep. I feel a little offended, but I've been considering having them hang off of me. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. Ha ha ha! What's wrong, Yi chan Bleh! That's right, we were just going to go play a game of Risk, remember? That's it! We didn't have anything in the room waiting for you, like ropes or cattle prods or... Chains. Lips. Excitement. I don't know, Misha! <laughs> I was, I, fuck the implications. <laughs> <laughs> this all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we say... <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you haven't already purchased a dildo for yourself, I recommend it. It's a good time. By the way, well, never mind. I was just gonna no, talk fuck it. I was just gonna talk about an argument that uh, my this is about digressing and side questing. I suppose you're right. I was gonna talk about an argument uh, that I had with. Our fellow Let's Player, you may recognize him from other videos, Just a Fucker. Yeah. But then I realized it wasn't actually an argument so much as just something we had discussed and then I had to Google later on. What so was that? It was the price of dildos. Because myself and Just a Fucker have never purchased a dildo... They go from pretty cheap to extremely expensive. Yeah, that's what I found out. But I looked on Amazon and pretty much you can get one for like 10 bucks. You can, but they're shit. You want, to, you want to go for at least the $25 range, unless you're going for something really small. Small? Why would you buy a small deal? That seems well, like counterproductive. Well, like a cheap, cheap, cheap vibrator. Okay. Or you want to go for, like, a packer, or you just want to get something, like, just for really cheap. The thing is, the ones that are more expensive are made of better material and less likely to disintegrate with certain lubrication, <laughs> whereas the cheaper ones are almost usually made out of exclusively silicone, and if you use a silicone-based lube, then you fuck them. Did you just say a packer? Yeah. What is a packer? Ah, okay. Is well, it implying fudge packing? No. Okay. A packer is... Imagine a small, very soft, usually, uh, flaccid penis analog. It's meant for, oh, it's meant yes. for transgender... Okay, packing your... Okay. It's meant now, for... Now, so when uh, you were saying dildo when you said packing, I assumed it was like a... It is technically a dildo, though. It's not suitable for penetration. Yes. That okay. That's what I was thinking. A packer. You've probably seen ours around. I saw. There. I've seen one in my life. Yeah. To be fair, it was owned by my friends. But then again, I'm not in that scene, so. Most people aren't statistically. Statistically, yes. Yeah. They're gonna tie him down and torture him, apparently. Yep. All right. Well, let's see it. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason, it just seemed like it would be so plausible. I don't think it's entirely implausible. Getting the student council room is simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. We just like your ass. Yeah, I really. mean, bleh! We want to be on top of you. Reverse That's cowgirl. not true, he chan she chan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman versus speed. That's right. So our life is in danger now? And that is true, though. When their life is threatened, people are capable of pulling off superhuman versus speed. And strength and all kinds of weird shit. Yeah. He's like, fuck my body, just go as hard as possible. There was a firefighter that had to run his ass off to avoid a fire, and they estimated that he ran about 25 miles per hour, and he was like a shit. fat old guy who was just, like white, and like shit the fuck a terrible on. like specimen for a race. <laughs> But I saw this on the Discovery Channel. The fire was getting... He was fighting a forest fire. Yeah. And the fire became so uncontrollable that he had to just sprint as fast as he could to get out of there. He just uh, Otherwise die. Yeah. And so, yeah, they they measured the 
how long it took him to get out and how long of a distance he ran, and they right. said that in order to get there, he had to run upwards of twenty five miles an hour to get there. And so he, he was like, and he was like forty eight or some shit like that, and fat. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's yeah. that's what happens when your life is threatened. You kill it. Yeah. Or get killed. Life is threatened. Her expression unchanging. Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. Hide the knife. Mmm. Hmm. 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 Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that! I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it is quite large. Maybe even a little larger than the classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? I think they're like the only two people in the fucking student council. Possibly. Aside from the table and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something, but the most notable thing in this room doesn't have is other people. Are we early? Blah! No. What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Blah! Yeah, that's right. Yep. Before I managed to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. Blah! Hey, Chan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain it to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizuna takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it out on the table. Bitch. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. But it's war, and you're a boy, in an anime-inspired visual novel made by an otaku-based board on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> of course! Anyway. After Misha spends a little too long for her walking, running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game is started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. I'm aware. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drawing her fingers on the table to get my attention. Yi Chen, Shi Chen wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. Shi Chen also said that she wants you to keep Australia if you could agree to join the student council. <laughs> I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as, a, as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. Wow. And anyway, no. <laughs> Blah. Shi Chan admires your fighting spirit and would be a banana foot dictator who would spare your people if you would agree to join the student council. I'd like to point out that I've just figured out that my hair is long enough for me to slick back. Yep. And I now have no uh, issue with my hair in my eyes now. Yeah. It's been too long. Can you try the hat on. Ooh, the hat. Also, can I have one of those uh, yes, absolutely. unbranded cigarettes? Gosh, your head is much smaller than mine. That hat's big on me. This hat is not large on me. That is that is also a 12-year-old girl's hat. Ah, well, you must have the head of a 12-year-old girl. Smaller than. Because it's big on me. Wait, a 12-year-old girl? Yep. Which means you got this hat from a 12-year-old girl? No, it was bought from the girls' section at Limited 2, which was then given to another person I know, and then I got that hat from that other person. Who was a 12-year-old girl? No. Okay. Who was a full-grown adult. Okay. So 12 is just an arbitrary number here. Right, but it's like the, okay. the, the store that it came from is aimed at the 12 to 14 range. I do like this hat, but I have to say, uh, I'm more of a flat bill kind of guy. Well, not so much a Fidel yellow, Castro style. Swag it. I don't really know what kind of uh, hat that is, but it's. I always call it a Castro cap, and it just has little. Uh, you know those studs the emos had in their belts for a while. Oh yes, it has those all the way around the pyramid the base. studs. Yeah. Those aren't the emos anymore, though. But you are correct. The emos did use that at one time. Yep. Now it's just anybody. Yep. A lot of goth. Good. Yeah, I got a wider for you there. Oh, thanks, huh? So I can leave. So I can leave. Wah ha! Ah ha! Ah ha! They're both giggling. They love it. They love dangling power over a boy's head. There's nothing wrong with that. Feminists. 
I'll dangle my power over a boy's head any day. I hear that. You still got back to David Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. Oh, she likes you. Look at that. Look into her eyes. Look into them and undress her. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Wow. Blah! Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Mm. Ah, wait, please, slow down, Shizun. Um, Shizun, Shizun says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Mm. Oh, are you going to be crushing her world empire, huh? With that's, a rebellion, then. That's, uh... He's going to turn this rape into a murder. Yeah. Ah, okay. That actually is an Acacia Strain lyric, by the way. Shout out to the Acacia Strain. Hey, man. Oh, look at the face! I didn't notice! Look at this gal's face right now! Wow, nice. Ooh! Those eyes of her shine with childlike mischief. I almost missed it. I wouldn't miss it if I had quick pass. Yeah. Fuck me. Fuck the train that's going through our town right now. Blah! We're gonna yell over it. Fuck him! Mm-hmm. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Uh, this is incorporating risk... Well, let's hear it, Admiral Akbar. ...risk strategy here. That reference is not lost on me, however... Attack... Well, here's the thing. We don't know the situation. I can tell you that in my experiences with risk... Attacking aggressively fucks you. Well, but at the, in the same side of that token, I have attacked aggressively and been fucked, but I've also played conservatively and got fucked as well. True. I mean, again, we don't know the situation. If you're outnumbered, attacking aggressively might be your only option. True. Beta. Not doing it. Attack. Yeah, no, definitely attack aggressively. That's the alpha strategy. Even if you lose. Yep. She's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my for nope. Fuck. No, he's screwed. Yeah, I can recoup the advantage. Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. What a wow. fucking tard! That is not a good idea. That's not what I meant. Attack aggressively means a pointed attack right True. up the. God damn it! It's worth a shot. No, it's not. <clears throat> a few turns later, I end up losing the game. No shit. Yeah, because you're a dunce. <clears throat> God damn it. <clears throat> Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. Pump a fist. <laughs> She's alpha enough to pump her fist. I win! I win! Yay! There's no need to translate that. It was pretty clear. Yep. <laughs> I don't look so sad each end. You were really giving your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Blah! <laughs> he chan you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. she chan is impressed. Wow. That impressed is, by the alphaness. That is kind of a pretty daring move. That's... Getting, anyway, whatever. Blah! The mark of great people is that they are daring. Who dares wins? And that they can follow through. You're already halfway there. <laughs> you just can't follow through. Story of my life. You're gonna be dumb, you're gonna be tough. Blah. I can attack, but I can never follow through. That isn't enough, though. This potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't take the first step, and there is no point to that if you don't keep going. Wow, that's catch-22. Don't take the yeah, first right. step if you can't keep going, and don't keep going if you can't take the first step. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. I want to see more. Do that. Well, on a timeline, it would only make sense that that would make sense. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Real life isn't a timeline. Donnie Darko taught me that. Indeed. You're right, Chi Chen. But that's so demanding. Blah! Blah! Shizune leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful, more like the serious person I expected her to be from the start. Blah. Blah. Chi Chen, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing something so early. I haven't even taken a look at, my, at any other clubs yet, but spending time with Shizune and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I'll still need more time to think about it before I can decide for sure. 
Maybe. I'll get back to you on it. Boy. Well, he went from a no to a maybe, so they're making yeah. progress. Okay, he chan. But I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No. Really. I'm deeply considering this. Yeah, really. Pondering it in the time warp aether of the room that is not a script in blank, that I can't remember his line. <laughs> really? He chan if you're going to say that, you're saying it is definitely the truth and there can't be any mistake yet. I know. I know, I guess I should have my revenge for losing, at the very least. Wow. Izune smiles that that in mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expect. It's like a four-hour game, man. Yeah, really. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Izune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. I don't to be determined when the library's open. There's a clock right there on the wall. They don't ever go. Ah, uh, we don't have a library. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, chi -chan. Well, we think the library's open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. You want to show where it is? No, thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye! Wow, he is not at all trying to hang out with these two hot bitches. Nope. One flight of stairs up, and I run into problems. I suppose he lives in an anime world where every bitch is hot, though. Mm-hmm. There's no demand. Yeah. It's all supply, no demand. Well, the girls are all super aggressive. That's true, which is uh, great. It's almost a male fantasy. It is exactly Exclusively a male only <laughs> hot girls in the world, and all of they them are, are all ultra aggressive. Desperate and needy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor. Smash the patriarchy. Uphold the patriarchy. Men are the ultimate. Men are the world. I have several feminist friends who will probably hate this video for this fact. Oh, I do too, and they fuck will... Fuck them, they or rather will... fuck the idea of their extremist views, <laughs> although I don't actually hold extremist views, so otherwise I wouldn't be friends with them, so I can't... There's no criticism, <laughs> I'm just warping here, please don't hate me, God! I also hold extremist views, huh? Ah, ah. I really do, kill them all. <laughs> I don't give a shit, equality, everyone dies. Yep. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily, easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there is a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Swag. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, I might door dodge my attention because it's not closed. And not open either, just barely just like seeing something else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means there's someone inside that can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. Man. Man. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider in this school can't be shaken from my mind, so much that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it is much easier to open than I'd anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head further inside the inside of the room as fast as possible, the meek, hello, on my lips is quickly snatched away wow. by tentacles. Yeah, really. When does that come into play here? I don't know, probably check five. Yeah, really. I, I, Act four. Doubt, no clue. Blind. Yep. I belong in this school. I'm likes playing this blind, so I'm a disabled girl, I guess. Uh, cripples. This is say. not as I was expecting. I'm on the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice. Even me saying there's a door with the son of a beautiful girl, evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there. She's blind. May I help you? Possibly. Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's a soft, measured voice that reminds me she's being separate from the room itself. I know she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners she I met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi. Sorry for intruding. I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Autistic, too. Is that an autistic feature? Somewhat. Care to take a seat, says the wavy-haired girl. Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight quietness of her eyes means she must be at least partially blind, like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. Wait, doesn't have a detectable accent so she's only half? Uh, Japan. Must have grown up here. Okay, maybe. 
And I'm gonna take my seat. Her composure takes me slightly off guard. A rare from my confidence makes the silence entirely uncomfortable. Or entirely comfortable. Rather. Entirely comfortable. Ooh. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. <laughs> I take it you're a new student to Yamaku, says the wavy hair girl. Ah, uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling that my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm the least the Pleased to meet you. Peace out. Peace on the kai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of a teacup. Did you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there. Her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. This is a weird thing that's happening right now. Indeed it is. This guy just stumbles into the room with what he thinks is a blind person, and she is just immediately... Hello, sit down. What's your name? Would you like a drink? What else can they do? I suppose so. I mean, if somebody broke into where I was at, you know, well, it's up. You want to join me? Yes? I, sim I don't know if I would immediately assume they would want to join me. Especially if they said she was, or he was lost. Yeah. She does nothing to help him Fuck find him. what Fuck he him. needs to find. Fuck him. You come into my space, you're doing what I'm doing. I suppose so. Right amount of cup into the water. Right amount of cup into the water. Yep. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I've never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offerer preparing the drink. Ah. So... Her soft going spring me out of my silent observance. Which room are you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and me, I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Mr. Muto. She gives a small giggle before settling down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. So she thinks the sign teacher's an idiot, too, like everyone. Yeah. He's quite a character. I imagine he'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. I'd say so. <clears throat> Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of my face. Really, please. There's no need to be too formal. Uh-huh. Says the person being exceptionally formal. Yeah, apparently. really, and drinking tea. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Yep, exactly. Oh, well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. It seems as though this game is written about our lives. We always <laughs> predict, we immediately predict the things that they straight up tell us. Well, uh, that we are assholes. I well, suppose so. I could have written this game very easily. Although I probably would have had more assholishness. Yeah, I would have put there way There would not more have been the, the pretentiousness of, cred like, credibility. Yeah. It would have been hente rape right off the bat. <laughs> weeding into, like, Oh no, my four-year-old daughter is pregnant with my alien love child! <laughs> Tentacles come from her <laughs> vagina. Yep. It's teeth. Teeth! It's teeth! <laughs> so which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third-year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and it's specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Ah, uh, I mean, uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Fucked on. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My, my, there's no need to change her speech on my account. Ah, sure, sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. Ha, <laughs> ha, shelling. <laughs> <laughs> An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. 
While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use the room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club, and the book club in the room near the library. There are, new, there are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away it seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Ah, good, that's a relief. I've really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact <laughs> seems to slightly amuse her. He doesn't want to join a club. Oh no, what can do about this? Oh shit! Well, you can't let them know anything about you. This is, after all, Japan. This isn't Canada 2027. No, this is Japan, what I assume is 2013? Something like that. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. Blinds. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I, lighting has become very warm all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, that was weird. This is intimate. Strength me orange tint, and I don't even read the text. Yep. It says it even for me. God damn it. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh, the time's gone. Okay, this is almost hilarious how they do that. Yeah. Have you seen that happening a lot? Uh huh, he just gets sidetracked. Oh, the time's gone quickly. Oh, the time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind. Of course, she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. <clears throat> it seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Like you. Eh? Sorry, Sal, I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to allay her concern. Ah, oh, no, it's okay, the library is still up. She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shitsune when I had the chance, but it really seems like we know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays, which means that it's approaching winter. Yeah, really. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. <clears throat> yeah, the sun's going down before 6.30. Yeah, well, Japan. America. Yep. <laughs> mm, I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, though, Willie. He smiles and gives a deep nod, her hand still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, kind of think of it. Shall I show you where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it, all right. Well, plus my navigational skills fail me, which they will. Yep. Which they seem to have a habit of oh, doing. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> yep. It's all right. I was going to be taking to the library, talking to the library in there in any case. I can introduce you. This gets better and get better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a strict retractable cane that is slipped inside the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Louis much walks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Louis is for navigation. Together, we leave the peaceful room and enter one of the empty hallways onto the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers. We slowly walked through the hallway. It didn't take long for us to arrive at the door into the warm looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wing. It is first. She gives an appreciative smile with a gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library with the distinct smell of old books, giving the place an almost old world air. Ooh. There don't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuka, are you here? She said it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course, Lily really can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Thump. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Ah! Huh. The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to an extremely rigid, rigid attention. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? Your face, God. 
so yeah. like just sad and shocked looking like ah. her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual and she's rubbing the back of her head good afternoon what happened just now I heard a strange sound it's nothing I just hit my head See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and when I was looking for it, a pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay, it's okay, sorry for making you worry. This is nothing, I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Louie's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> The girl fidgets with her fingers as Louie doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, Louie, did you get my message? Message. Hmm. I get so many. Hmm. Oh, the two important books that arrived. Right, right. They found the game. I can't believe it took so long, but... And Mr. their celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure. She notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh! No, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book? Or return one? Sorry! Sorry! The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. You with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hisao! Right, he's out. Uh, pleased to meet you too, he's out. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell he's out a little something about the library? <coughs> Louis' innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I, please, Louis, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. <laughs> Damn. Just not to give a brief overview, but to immediately want to. Let, tell him what he wants to hear. Emotionally crippled girl. This is, yeah, a very a very awkward person to even experience through this medium. Yeah. I'd hate to meet this person in real it's life. fucking tough to read. I don't know how to fucking go about it. Yeah. <laughs> I keep trying to find the right inflection and timing, and it's just not there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. Too much responsibility. How is any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the white novels are. Hmm. But, so there are a lot of books in Braille here? <clears throat> I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to... not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. <laughs> well, I think about a third or the fourth of Yuko Yama, Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students to be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have <laughs> to organize and shelve all of them. Damn. It's so troublesome, and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. Don't. <laughs> Ah, a very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. <laughs> um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. <clears throat> it's probably best for all of this if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. They're all manga. Yep. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. The library. It's as if the calm move from the room I had tea with with Lily snuck, out, uh, snuck with us in here, unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back, and the library closes. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk either reading or sweat, stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. <laughs> sleeping in the library. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several beanbags. It's the dark-haired girl from my class. 
There's the girl no that I like. Because <laughs> I'm just a teenage. Anyway, you all know the end of that. I hope. Come listen to Iron Maiden, baby, with, with me. me. Ooh. 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 Yep. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes it look like she's really into it. That's right up near the eyes, there. Right up on the face. I read like that, too, when I want to be really yep. into a book. Uh-huh. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. Why? Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up from me at, from underneath her fringe. The expression has changed dramatically and the eyebrow is visible through the hair. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third if not a half, is pretty badly scarred. My, arms are, my eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past the hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second, I am shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. Definitely makes it worse. It takes many seconds to collect myself remember what I walked up to here, walked up to her for. Definitely introduce yourself. But do we want to apologize for startling? No she way. did, like, jump, like, oh shit. Don't apologize for shit. We're in the same class. Alright, fuck it. Hi! I'm new here. East down the guy. We're in the same class. Um, I just transferred here the other day. Maybe you don't remember. But dum dum. Yep. The girl doesn't say a word, but simply stares at me, wide-eyed. I'm still getting used to the place, so I'm trying to meet as many people as I can. So, uh, what's your name? Hanako. Hanako. Her speech is stuttering and so quiet that it is barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Hanukkah, what? Huh? <laughs> oh, what are you reading? She gently tips the book backwards so that I can read the title, at the same time hiding her face behind it. She must have noticed me staring before. Yep. Life of Pi? I've never heard of it. That's a really good book. Anyway. Never before, I've never heard of it. Really? I know, I've heard of it, but... Pretty dope. What's it about? A boy and a tiger. That is one way to put it. Yep. On a boat. All right. I can see this taking some time. Sounds interesting. Is it good? She nods from behind the book, but stays silent. She looks kind of tense. A bit like uh, Yuko earlier. A different way. More like better fight with terror, I'd say. So the mystery delinquent girl turned out to be anything but. And she... Wow, I didn't even... Again. <laughs> quivering in a way that makes it look like she is mortally afraid of me. Go hug her. Wow, look at her quivering. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I was wild about. It's like, wow, I didn't even notice. Hug her, for real. Hold her still. <laughs> the only way out of this, far as I can tell, is to try and get a normal conversation going. You can just leave. True. It's also an option. But that's super awkward. Is it a library book? I'm looking for new ones to read, but there's just so many. No, it's mine. Oh, so do you come here often? Nope. A huge... Huge blush spreads on Hanako's face, and her eyes widen far wider than I thought it was possible for eyes to do. Uh oh, did she interpret my lame attempt at small talk as a female attempt to pick her up? I mean, uh, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Hi, hi, I. I've got to go do something. Shoo! Or if you will. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. Continue chasing. But nope, you gotta stop by the two bitches. Yep. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanukkah myself, I approach girls. Hey, did you see uh, no scar one past here? Uh, maybe. What does she look like? Long, dark hair, kinda shy, had walls of scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanukkah, would you? She knows, the blind one knows. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, Look at uh, the blind one's facial expression as well. Like, uh, you, like, are you serious? Like, uh. 
Yeah, that's her. She's a homicidal maniac. Yeah. Mother exactly. Fucking, get away from that uh, bitch. Shit. You need to stab. Yeah, you're trying to save your life by running away, bastard. Yep. Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and trying to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh, dear. Yuko, would, would you excuse me? I had better try and find her. There's just there. Uh, there's, uh, hold on to these until you come back. Uh, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. Uh, I'll see you later, then. Goodness. Really so deeply emotionally scarred here. Yeah. Men problems. Yeah, I'd say so. Willie hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing, I just talked to her. Tried to get to know her. Didn't even manage to get started. Yuko sighs and looks awfully body up. That's wrong. Uh huh. Even more so than she did before. I guess you weren't wrong so much as tactless. Tactless? 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 <laughs> That girl is a bit of a special case. It's like she never really talks to anyone. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder if this how she is, I think. You guys don't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. Perhaps I was being a little tactless after all. I don't really think that's yeah. the case at all. 